2024 Cove 5 10X Review, a budget-friendly adventure bike with powerful performance. The Chinese company Cove may have only been around since 2017, but they've quickly made a name for themselves in the adventure biking world. After entering the Dakar twice and developing a road-legal 450 rally bike, Cove recently introduced their first larger motorcycle, the 800X, designed to rival the Tenera. But that's not their only new release this year. The 510X, a middleweight adventure bike that's A2 compliant, features top-tier components and comes in at under 6,000 pounds. The 510X stands apart from Cove's 450 Rally and 800X with a clear focus on the road rather than off-road capability. It's equipped with smaller wheels, shorter suspension travel, and a fairly hefty build, making it more of a road-based adventure bike. Take along the lines of the Honda NX500 or Benelli TRK 502X rather than the CF Moto 450 metric tons or Royal Enfield Himalayan. For a first attempt, it's impressive. While the 510X has some rough edges, it offers comfort, presence, and an attractive spec for under 6,000 pounds. The limited availability of UK dealers and uncertainty around a new brand may give some pause, but these challenges will likely fade with time. At the very least, the 510X could put pressure on established manufacturers. If they don't step up their game, brands like Cove may soon be hot on their heels. Underneath its bodywork, the 510X features a steel diamond frame with a welded rear subframe and an aluminum swing arm. The chassis includes familiar brand names like Nissan brake calipers, KYB suspension, and Metzeler Turrence tires, all adding a reassuring touch of quality, which is crucial for a new manufacturer. Upon first glance, the Co feels bigger than a typical 500 cubic centimeters bike. The seat height is a manageable 820 millimeters, but the 20 liter fuel tank is broad and tall, with handlebars that sit high and require a long reach. You sit more in the 510X rather than on it, with decent wind protection from the wide bodywork and a two-position adjustable windscreen. Accompanying the size is a noticeable sense of weight. Cove claims a curb weight of 206 kilograms, but MCN's digital scales show it at 215 kilograms. However, it's well-balanced on the move, with predictable handling from its 19-inch front and 17-inch rear wheels, and a smooth ride thanks to the fully adjustable suspension. The brakes are designed to be more user-friendly than aggressive, with a soft initial bite that requires a firm squeeze for stronger stopping power. The 510X is powered by a Zhongshan-built 498 cubic centimeters parallel twin. And no, it's not a Honda CB500 clone. The engine design is conventional, four valve heads, twin cams, and a 180 degree crank. But the bore and stroke, 72 by 61.2 millimeters, are quite different from Honda's. This engine has a rev happy character. Peak torque of 33 lbft comes in at 7,000 RPM, with the A2 compliant 47 brake horsepower arriving at 8,500 RPM and the rev limiter kicking in just beyond 9,000 RPM. Below 6,000 RPM, not much happens, so on tight, twisty back roads, you may need to shift from third to second gear to power out of sharper turns. However, once you keep the revs up, the cove moves along nicely. With its light clutch and smooth gearbox, the engine is generally well-behaved, though it has some rough spots. The throttle can feel jerky, especially when transitioning from closed to open throttle and lower gears. There are two riding modes, Sport and Eco, but the difference between them is minimal. Since the 510X uses a cable throttle rather than a ride-by-wire system, the modes only tweak the ignition timing. The engine also has a bit of a buzz at higher speeds. In top gear, 75 miles per hour sits at 6,000 RPM, bringing just enough vibration to blur the mirrors, and after a while, numb the fingers too. Fuel economy is a measured 54 miles per gallon good, if not quite as frugal as the likes of Honda's NX500. Still, with a 20-liter fuel tank, that's enough to last roughly 200 miles between fill-ups. Cove has only existed for a few years, and only just arrived in the UK, meaning we've got nothing in the way of previous customer experience to go on when it comes to reliability. On the face of it, the 510X looks pretty well-built, 
and the use of familiar brands lend some confidence. That said, we did experience faults with the 510 XS tire pressure and temperature sensors throughout our test. The dash displaying a series of warning messages for both abnormal tire temperature and missing tire pressure information. It didn't affect the riding experience at all, but it's not a great first impression. The 510X comes with a 24-month warranty. That's fair enough. It's the same as Honda offer on their new motorcycles. But perhaps it's also something of a missed opportunity for Co. A longer warranty is arguably even more important for a brand that's in its infancy. Demonstrating faith in the product and helping to offset fear some riders may have about taking a step into the unknown. Key to the Cove's appeal is its 5,999 pound price tag. The 510XS most high profile rival is Honda's NX500, currently priced at 6,829 pounds. But that's just for the base model Honda. Add on the accessories that come as standard on the Cove to compare like with like, and the NX's price climbs to over 7,500 pounds. That makes the Cove look pretty tempting value. Another Chinese-made alternative adventurer is Benelli's TRK 502X. Officially, it's 6,299 pounds, but at the minute it's on offer for 5,999 pounds and even includes free three-piece Gibby hard luggage to sweeten the deal. It's also definitely worth a look at Komodo's impressive 450 metric tons, which undercuts the cove at just 5,699 pounds. It's slightly smaller, slimmer, and lighter than the 510X, and with its 21 18 inch wheels, it clearly offers a lot more in the way of off-road ability. If you're considering finance, an example PCP quote, correct as of August 2024, for the 510X starts with a 1,498 pounds and 75 pence deposit, followed by 35 monthly payments of just 79 pounds and 90 pence. At the end, there's an optional final payment of 2,736 pounds if you want to keep the bike. That's all assuming you ride 4,000 miles per year, with an APR of 9.9%. Check out MCN Compare for an up-to-date insurance quote. The 510X comes with a center stand, hand guards, engine bars, cross-spoke wheels, and a metal skid plate all included as standard. There's even both 12-volt and USB power sockets in the cockpit. That's a solid list of kit, which is all thrown in as standard. The dash is a modern 5-inch color TFT display, with slightly different graphics in sport and eco modes. Words and numbers are pretty tiny though, older eyes will be begging for a larger font size or a bifocal visor. The dash should also display tire pressure and temperature information, though our bike spent much of its time displaying tire sensor error messages. Rider aids are unsurprisingly pretty minimal. There are the two modestly different riding modes mentioned above, and the ABS is switchable, both on, rear only or both off, but there's no traction control, something that is included on Honda's NX500. The switch gear feels a little cheap and plasticky, but it does have a subtle blue backlight. It's a small but welcome touch. Plenty of bikes costing three or four times as much don't offer backlit switch gear. There's no word on 510X accessories yet. So if you want heated grips, hard luggage, or anything that's not included on the bike as standard, you'll need to find a solution from the aftermarket. The 2024 Co 510X is powered by a Zongshan built 498 cubic centimeters parallel twin engine, delivering an A2 compliant 47 brake horsepower at 8,500 RPM and 33 LBFD of torque at 7,000 RPM. Its engine has a rev happy nature. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe if you like videos like this. Thank you.